Hi, it's Cayman Reynolds. Many people asked if we do a follow-up on the fall swarm that we caught. If you want to watch that video on how we caught two little bitty swarms um, and caught it on the ground, you can watch that up here. Fall swarms usually are really small here. And that's typically because we have a dearth in summer. Our bees are at their biggest population, usually at the end of May, early part of June. And then over the dearth of late June, all of July and usually half to all of August depending on the rainfall our bees drop in, in size quite a bit I mean they can still be very healthy but they're not going to be the massive bees that they were with all the, the spring nutrition so anyways you know, we don't have usually big fall swarms but we'll get some little ones and it's kind of confusing sometimes because a lot of them won't even have queens and they'll just they'll run around the bee yard for weeks and uh, so high you can't catch them I mean, just really tiny. Oh, there's a small hive beetle. So you can see what they look like right now. You know, little colonies definitely are more prone to small hive beetle problems. I'd, looking at the top of them, you know, they look like they could be three frames or so. I'd say we're probably looking at two and a half frames max. I gave them combs, which gives them a big leg up. In nature, there's no way these bees are surviving without my help. Um, it's just too late in the season, they're too small, and also, you know, what if they have a virgin queen and she doesn't come back from me? There's just so many different factors, so right here I'm seeing a little bit of foodstuffs. Not a whole lot in this one, just a mostly dry comb. I did immediately put on some one-to-one. -one. I think I've fed two quarts so far of one-to-one -to, -one to this colony. You know, there's just not a whole lot of bees here, but there is some. There's an apivar strip that I threw in there, and this frame had a lot of bee bread on it, which I felt like was very important. There's the queen right there. And so, she, uh, she was mated. She started laying pretty quickly. Um, I checked back within a, a week or 10 days or whatever it was, probably earlier than I should have, and she was going to town in there. Wow. Look at that. Just makes you sometimes wonder why they do it. Very ill-advised swarm this time of the year, but hey, with a little bit of food, we're fixing to throw some Ultra Bee, even though we're getting some natural pollens, smoothing out the nutritional needs of little colonies like this really makes a, a big impact. On the big ones it's not as as crucial. You know they're, they're they're taking care of themselves but these little guys are just one bad week or two away from death. They just go backwards so quickly and there's there's not enough time between now and winter to be messing around. Well, that's great. The next frame over looks like it's just food and we got some capped brood over here. This late in the game, I threw that apivar strip in there because I had a few extra left over. Um, you know, a little spotty over here. I attribute most of that to the queen starting up to lay, to lay again, and also just you know not the greatest bee coverage in the world. If we were still drop, you know, if we were not still staying in the 60s at night or or above, this colony would have some. Some issues obviously if you're getting really cold night temps these kind of boxes aren't the best we're still getting in the 80s regularly um, it's very warm and muggy at night right now so this colony has a good chance that if it can get a good round of brood like it's trying to to overwinter as a nuke and you know sometimes fall swarms will work out for you but again it's only because I'm helping these bees out. This is a question I get asked all the time. You know, what do wild bees do? They die a lot, a lot more than most people think. And if you study wild nature, pretty much any creature that's you know, been studied on, you're gonna find out that there's high mortality rates. Nature is not their buddy, it doesn't care if they survive. You either meet all the requirements or you're, you're toast. And this is kind of good because it, so, it, doesn't, it selects for better survival genetics, but that doesn't mean that they're good bees, honeybees for keeping. Um, you can have swarms and wild bees that don't like to get much bigger than this before they swarm again. I've caught some bees before 
put them in boxes and they'll have all kinds of room for the queen to lay, head space for the honey to go. And I've got 40 other colonies in the yard that are bigger and mm -hmm. badder and doing everything right and they're not swarming and that one will swarm anyways. That's poor genetics for a hobby beekeeper or especially a, pro a professional beekeeper. Um, you know, nature can do its own thing and us as beekeepers, we can do our own thing. I think the main thing for us as beekeepers is trying to do our best to bring awareness of the pests that are affecting honeybees. And, and maybe more important than anything is habitat, which is so crucial for everything. Trying to pre prevent people from mowing everything down, trying to plant better forage, just trying to bring awareness on you know, how these creatures really need just good nutrition out there. And a lot of times, just little things that we're doing affect that so, so much. But anyways, you know, a colony like this is like a newborn calf, you know, like a bottle-fed calf. And without some loving, it's, it's gonna die, unfortunately. But we're not gonna let that happen. I'm looking forward to see what this one is gonna do for us. So thanks for watching this video. And if you have any comments on false swarms or anything, leave them below.